Philadelphia, in San Jose, or DC, Los Angeles, Galaxy. Beach Pass. This is over. Colorado Rapids. Vancouver Whitecaps. Seattle Sounders. This is my anthem to you. Montreal Impact. Tosh USA. New York Red Bulls. Pitch Pass. Your all access credential to the people that matter in MLS. Here's your host, Greg Roach. Thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for downloading the show. And also, I'm going to be presumptive here. Thanks for telling all your friends about the show. And thanks for telling them about PitchPass.com, uh, our website. And if you go on iTunes, please rate the show and uh, leave a comment. That'd be great. Best thing you could do for me. Uh, the only thing I can ask you to do, actually. We have a fun one lined up, I think. Brian Strauss, he'll be on a little bit later. The sporting news is Brian Strauss. Talk about the U.S. men's national team. They got an upcoming qualifier, huge qualifier versus Costa Rica on uh, March 22nd in Denver. And we'll talk about the goalkeeping situation as well. Speaking of goalkeepers, he uh, put up a big win in their last match versus FC Dallas. They got a Super Classico coming up for their next match. Chivas USA's Dan Kennedy joins us right now on Pitch Pass. Dan, how are you? Good. How's it going? It's going really well. Well, I mean, we got sunshine here on East Coast. I know that's not a big thing for you, but for, for our <laughs> East Coasters, it's a huge deal. <laughs> I could I, I could understand that, yeah. It's All right. about uh, 72, 73 degrees uh, here in sunny. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, okay, Dan. You, you don't <laughs> have to go into the deep forecast for us. Just acknowledge that it's sunny and we can move on. <laughs> So what's going on? Well, let's talk about Saturday, or let's talk about Sunday because that was a, that was a huge deal, or, or was it a huge deal for you guys? Well, I mean, I, I think uh, obviously it's been some time since we won a game, and but the most important thing is we have a lot of new faces and a lot of new guys to not only our team but to this league. So I knew the first one would come. I just was hoping that it would come sooner rather than later so you know we we just get get that feeling in the locker room and get the get the guys that haven't been necessarily around this week some some confidence was it a holy crap we won situation with you guys or was it hey you know what this is this is what should be happening yeah i mean i think we all we we had a terrific preseason together and the first game didn't didn't end the way that we wanted it to, and I felt like the scoreline was a bit unfair against Columbus. Um, so we came out with a lot to prove, and and you know even with going down a goal in the game, we came we bounced back and we put three on them. So hopefully, hopefully that'll get get us going in, on the attacking end too. You know. Well, that's why I, I was going to ask you why it wasn't a surprise for you that you got a result against FC Dallas and before you you shift into to player speak you would kind of acknowledge it the game wasn't really going your way uh through the first half and then even up to the 60th minute before you guys turned it around so why wasn't it a surprise to you that you were able to get a result even after well, the start well i mean i i i, I prepare for every game and in, in the mindset that you know we're 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 lining up in order to win the game um going down the goal was you know, that's an important part of the game in the sense that we, we could have been discouraged and, and let it affect us, but instead we responded and we moved forward and we continued to create more opportunities. And it, we were re- rewarded in the end with, with, a, with a couple of fantastic goals yeah. um, from, from hard work alone. So it's, uh, it, was, it was promising for us, and, and it was a great feeling going into the locker room after the game, you know, knowing that we're not, we're not going to – this early in the season, we're not putting ourselves in a position to play catch up. So now we uh, we can go into the Classico, which is a huge match this Sunday, yep. uh, feeling confident. I uh, I'm really glad we're speaking because there, you guys, the locker room, the team, the organization is probably the one of the most talked about teams and clubs in the league. And there's there's a lot of preconceived notions. And I, I, I hate going by preconceived notions. So I'm glad I'm getting to talk to someone yeah. within the organization. So uh, I just want to I want to ask some questions to you rather than just try to spin it some sort of negative way or whatever. So was this was this offseason hard for you personally within the organization? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it was uh, it was there was a lot of unknown. Um, but you know what? In my in my whole career, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I've had one easy off season. I, I think this is a bit of the nature of pro sports in the game. You know, there whenever you don't achieve uh the playoffs or whatever your club considers success, there's gonna be there's gonna be change. So um I was I was fully expecting it. 
and I wasn't sure if I, I was going to be part of that change or part of the group moving forward. And fortunately enough for me, I was part of the group moving forward. So I'm just trying to make most of this opportunity. And I'm sure you're you're happy at Chivas USA. And with that assumption, how is it when you read Twitter or you go on? I don't. You probably don't go on message boards. You read things in 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 blogs and things about all the people being traded away, and then they everybody's saying, "Well, Dan Kennedy's next. Dan Kennedy's next." Do you have to sit there and think to yourself, <laughs> "Hang on, hang on, guys. This I'm on this team. This is my team. I want to be here." Right. Right. Yeah. You know. I- to be to be honest, I try not to get caught up in that too much. Um, it was rumors were circulating in the off season about me being traded, and and I don't know how real that was or wasn't. Um, but <clears throat> with that being said, you know, for for me as a, as a player, uh, if and, until it happens, you you can't really react. You know what I mean? It, you you kind you'll kind of just get caught up in it and it'll distract you. So. When I was going into the off season, anything that I did here, <clears throat> I, it didn't, it didn't stop my process of, of training in the off season or preparing for this season. And and you know, in the end, if I would have wasted all that time, energy, and effort worrying about it, you know, really would have gotten me nowhere. Because look at where I am now; I'm still here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you think about the locker room, because Chivas USA has been very public about saying that we're changing our philosophy, our mindset, our mentality of, of the club. Is it that different in the locker room from last year to this year as far as that mindset is concerned? Well, I mean, there's there's definitely been a massive change in, in player personnel and, front, and coaching staff and front office. I mean, from top to bottom, there's been drastic change. So it's, it's definitely different. Um, I, you know, I always say that the most important thing for me is that the guys, whoever is here is on board and, and we're doing this, we're doing this for no other reason than to win, whether it's on the training field or in the ticket sales office or <clears throat> ultimately in the end on the field on match day, it's, it, well, whatever we do, we need to do it to win. And that's, uh, that's really all I care about. How is your Spanish these days, Dan? My Spanish is good. I actually, it's, uh, it's ironic. I, my, my career has been strange in the sense that I, I left UCSB in 2005 and I was drafted by Chivas. Things didn't quite work out the way I wanted them to. So I ended up in Puerto Rico for two seasons playing in Puerto Rico, which is obviously Spanish speaking country. And then from there I went and played in Chile for a year, uh, in South America. So I've had a very, uh, a very thorough, cultured experience in soccer and it's all been it's all been latin influenced and it's been nothing it's done nothing but great things for me so i'm i'm using it as as an opportunity to improve my spanish more but i think it's right now it's, it's pretty good so this isn't a situation where you are going through some sort of shock of oh my god i can't understand a lot of my teammates you are you communicating in spanish no. on the pitch yeah 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 the communication part of it's really not a problem with for me, and I, I have no problem even going in and, 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 and having meetings in Spanish if, if I need to. Um, and I feel like I can get my point across, and I definitely understand the language well enough to, to know what's going on. Well, let me ask you this. Is, is Chelis uh, speaking Spanish to the, to the team? Is he addressing the team in Spanish? Uh, he does in both. He, he actually he, he does his best to address it in Spanish and English. And then we have... Uh, we have Two other coaches and definitely a handful of players that that speak um, English and Spanish that translate if if translating needs to be done. So it's really it's really not that big of an issue because regardless of of I guarantee you every team in this league there's 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 guys on totally. the roster that that don't uh, speak English as their first language that need tra- need translating too. You know. Did you chuckle at his comments post match or was that is that kind of par for the course with him? Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, he is. He is very quotable, I guess. And it's funny because for me, I translate everything so literally um, that I will. Al- I will not always understand his jokes in Spanish. <laughs> um, so I'll need them to be explained to me. But yeah, he's a, he's a funny guy, and you can tell that he's charismatic, and it, it rubs off on the group. Um, and I, he, he's he's just got a he's got a he's got a good way about him, and I can understand why he's been successful coaching coaching before. Okay, so give me your best 
behind the scenes thing that he said that's been kind of offbeat, and then the best thing that you've lost in translation? Well, he said, <laughs> he's, in Spanish, he said, uh, the translation was, when I say frog, you guys jump. And I understood that, and I thought that was pretty damn funny. Because <laughs> um, usually it's, you know, in English you would say, when I say jump, you guys say how, how high. high. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And then uh, when whenever he, he'll, he'll talk, he'll, he'll, go, he'll go on a, a, about a story and use an example. And I think the example he used was, was dandruff, you know. He, he was talking about dandruff. I don't know what the hell is, what, what we're talking about here. And, uh it was, you know, don't, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. Oh, and he was saying, don't sweat dandruff because it's just at the end of the right. day, it's just dandruff. It's just a little, it's just a little thing. So why let it bother you? You know, and we're not going to sweat the sweat the small stuff around here. Do you walk so out? Do you walk out of there going, but, wow, that was that was that was very simple, but really, really deep. It, and and no, and that's honestly, I've been pleasantly surprised many times uh, uh, on how well things are run. Um, but he does should he does a great job of of getting everyone on the same page and, and regardless of the language that is, is being spoken. And, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, hopefully this locker room continues to rally around his personality. I love people like that because when they say things like that, you, you crack up or you, you chuckle internally and then you walk away and don't really think about it. And then like maybe driving home, you go, Oh wait a second! That was really, really deep. Now I'm thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. And it keeps so, like you said, it keeps it light, but it's uh, it's assertive too. It's assertive too. So let's talk a little bit about the national team. Um, Tim Howard goes down. The speculation begins of okay, who's 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 going to step up? Who's going to step in his place? A lot of people in a lot of places were were throwing your name around. When you hear something like that, obviously you start thinking about Tim Howard and you, you want him to be healthy and you start thinking about the national team and you want the team to do be successful. But somewhere do you go, not is this an opportunity, but go, oh, hmm, things things could be changing if, I, if I'm ready to step up here. Well, I, I mean, I, I, feel, I feel like I am ready uh, and I, I would be prepared if given that opportunity. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the U.S., is, we're stacked with, with great goalkeepers and – the age, the age plays an interesting role in development, and I'm having my best years, my best years right now, and and I'm you know really in the prime of my career. And uh, with with that being said, you know we have guys like Sean Johnson and and Bill Hamid who we're trying as a country to develop to become the next Tim Howard. Uh, obviously, Timmy's Timmy's in a class of his own, and and Brad Guzan's right at, right at his heels just with the form that he's been on, been in in Europe. Um, and, uh, we need both of those guys without a doubt competing for that number one Jersey. And, and that next spot in line is, is always going to be, uh, an interesting choice for the coach and, and trying to round out the roster and how he sees fit, whether he needs a more experienced guy like Nick Ramondo to, to help the group along, or is he going to bring someone along that's younger and, and try to get him that experience so further down the line he feels comfortable, you know? So, I, you know, for me, it excites me that my name's thrown in the mix uh, by the pundits, but the reality is uh, I haven't had any contact with anybody from the national team. Um, so, I, you know, I, I keep focusing on, on what I can, focus on and that's just my job at hand here at Chivas USA. What do you think you need to do to to have your hand being raised acknowledged? <laughs> you know, I'm, or is I'm, that the million dollar question? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm 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 I, the I think for me uh, a big part of um my my next step in developing as a player is is the leadership side of things and uh, I'm honored to be the captain at Chivas USA, and I think it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting thing for me to captain this club as well with the heritage of Chivas and Chivas Guadalajara, you know. And I'm very proud to represent that. And you know, I, I, I like where I'm at right now in my career, but at the same time, I'm, uh, I'm definitely not satisfied uh, on my path. So I'm trying to just improve on every aspect and. Hopefully, if, if I can continue to do that, maybe one day I will get the opportunity to, to, 
to compete for one of those jerseys. You bring up a really, really good talking point, Dan, and you were respectful to Hamid and Sean Johnson. But with all due respect, they're they're in the same league you are as far as MLS. Um, they are still developing. I, I think you kind of consider yourself developed and ready to go and wondering why, okay, my hand's raised. Why is nobody uh, looking over here and calling on me? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you want... This is what we do. We compete, and and I would like I want to be on that platform to compete with the best that we have in this country. Um, so the best way for me to prove that is just to, to go about my business and 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 do it do it on the weekends uh, when we have our games. And you're also in an unusual situation as far as American soccer is concerned. In that, if if you played any other position uh, on the on the field, you'd probably already have a half dozen caps or so, but because you're in that position, which is the position where Americans churn out great goalkeepers, it's, it's sit and wait and it's gotta be frustrating for you. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't get discouraged about it, so I'm not sure frustrating is the right word. Um, I, if anything, I definitely use it as motivation. I, I, I feel like I have a good, uh, training process and a good physical training process and, uh, I just the way I try to go about everything is is to prepare myself for for improvement. So, uh, you know, I use all those setbacks and what, whatever it was. You know, even last season, the way last season went, it's it's all used as motivation to make me better, and that's that's kind of where my mindset is with it. Let's talk about the Super Classico, which is happening Sunday at Home Depot Center. And I read an article with some quotes from you in the Los Angeles Times. Um, where you said it's personal. We 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 want to show these guys that you know we we are on equal footing. Right now, you're still in the little brother syndrome. What does it mean for you guys to beat LA Galaxy, uh, even if it's just a regular season match? Well, I mean, that's this this game's uh, obviously we share the stadium with them. We know them well. They're coming off back to back championships. Um, we have a very new group of guys in the locker room that uh, haven't played in this game before and. Um, you know, it's important that, that we get everybody to understand what this game means, not only to our organization, but to our fans. And, and this is a game that's highlighted on our schedule every year, especially to our fans. And I know for me, it's personal because I look at those guys every day and, or not, maybe not every day, but when we see them in passing, you know, I think about the success they've had the past two seasons and, and, uh, you know, I want, I want to make sure that we're a club that's competing with them at the you know, at the, at their best right now, this is a, this is a great moment in their, in their franchise history. And it would be great for us to, to come in and, and compete and, and get some results against them. You, you kind of mentioned passing them and seeing them. You're the only two teams in the, in the league that had this situation. How often do you see galaxy guys either around the city or around the facility? Um, more so around the facility. LA is so, so big. We all live in different, different parts, but, um, you know, around the facility, it's nearly daily. Uh, so we develop relationships, friendships. Um, but if anything, those 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 relationships we develop only make that competition more fierce. You know, because mm-hmm. you really don't want to li- you don't want to lose to the guy next door. So um, I I know that it, it always it always is a battle, and I, it's one I I really I really relish and and look forward to and. And I wish I wish they uh, I, I wish they had Landon with them too, and they were you know really firing on all cylinders. But uh, looks like McGee and, and King will be enough to handle for yeah. for us at the weekend. So I think you're going to get some action on Sunday, Dan. Yeah. Don't worry yeah, about that. <laughs> you, you know it, it sucks. I was I was trying to make this an all UC Santa Barbara podcast. Uh, we had Chris Pontius all set up, but he 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 bailed on us. He canceled till next week. So now you're going to have to oh. carry the Gaucho flag for the entire podcast this week. I'll send him a text and give him a hard time for you. <laughs> Please do, because I was going to do the whole "you give me a message to give to him," but now, uh, now it's all disrupted thanks well, to Pontius. Well, you can, yeah. I mean, I can say I can still touch on Chris as uh, Chris as a player and a person if you want. Oh, please, please touch all you want on him as a person. Yeah, no, he's a he's uh, he's a really good he's a really good uh, really good guy, really good friend of mine. Um, we actually not only just went to UCSB, well, actually, we didn't go to UCSB together. Um, he was there after me, but we, we come from the same town called Yorba Linda in Orange County as well. So our history is, is, uh, very much intertwined and I'm a big fan of his and I think he's a great player. And I, you know, my expectation for him is that he, he plays a bigger role in this national team 
set up too going into the World Cup. Dan Kennedy, Chivas USA, thank you so much for uh, giving us some time and being so candid. I thank you for that. Any Anytime, guys. You guys give, just give us a shout whenever you want to have me on. You can follow Dan on Twitter at the number one Dan Kennedy.